verses 137 through 144. You are righteous, O Lord, and your judgments are right. You have appointed your decrees in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried, and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, but your commandments are my delight. Your decrees are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you. And I love these Sundays where all our voices of youth and those older than youth uh, gather together and make witness as one. Our second lesson is selected verses from the 11th and the 12th chapters in the letter to the Hebrews. By faith... Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, 
He received power of procreation even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren because he considered him faithful who had promised. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. By faith, Moses left Egypt unafraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. All thanks be to God for God's word. May God add to our hearing this day his blessing that we may have greater and deeper understandings for our own faith journeys. Amen. Until last night, I was in Pittsburgh since Wednesday. Um, I was at the annual meeting of one of our Presbyterian, one of our 34 Presbyterian Mission and Justice Networks, and I happen to be the moderator of this particular one, and these Mission, these mission and Justice Networks uh, are all assigned different parts of the world, and they all gather and they work towards mission and justice in those parts of the world. And, so we had our annual meeting in Pittsburgh at the Theological Seminary there. And as moderator, it's always an honor and a privilege to be with these people. The, there were slightly under 100 people there this week, and they represent hundreds if not thousands of Presbyterians across the country and across the world who are engaged in this work. And I'm always, I'm always honored and privileged to be in their presence, and I'm always humbled in being in their presence, because quite frankly, as I look out over that group that gathers, the people who are there, many of them much older than I, but others who are younger than I, but, but so many of these people represent so many more hours of commitment, of giving their life to this particular work. And so I stand there humbled in their presence because so many have done so much more than I have and I am privileged to be the person who leads them at this point in time. But this week I had an even greater honor and privilege and I wanna show you a picture. This is the Reverend Dr. Fahed Abu Akhl. Fahed was the moderator of the Presbyterian Church USA uh, 214th General Assembly back in 2002. That means he was our elected leader. And Fahed was our guest speaker, one of our guest speakers at the annual meeting this past week. And, um, and so I got to travel with him at, when the conference was over from Pittsburgh back to Atlanta where his home is. When Fahed was elected back in 2002, rank and file Presbyterians had little idea who Palestinians were. And Fahed was born and raised in a small village, basically outside of Nazareth. And not only did most Presbyterians not really know who Palestinians were, Many Presbyterians didn't realize how deep and rich Christian Palestinian tradition goes all the way back to Jesus Christ. This was the first time that Fahed could be with us 
because his wife Mary is struggling uh, mightily with Parkinson's and he, for years after he finished being moderator, had to take care of her. And we didn't see much of him because he was home with her most of the time, but her condition has gotten to a point where she's now in nursing care. And so that frees him up to travel for short periods before he gets back to her. And so he was able to come to our conference and speak. And we were talking there in the airport. I took his picture. I posted it on Facebook. I, I sent out the message to the world that I'm sitting, because he's got a great sense of humor, so I sent out the message that I'm sitting here with His Highness, Fahed Apo Akel, and he's bestowing upon me his wisdom and grace, and he got a kick out of that. But Fahed told me that next, in a, in a week or two, he'll be traveling to the funeral of another former moderator of the Presbyterian Church USA, Ben Weir in San Francisco. Ben was our moderator back in 1986, and you'll remember this story. He uh, was a PC USA missionary in Lebanon, and we'll show his picture now. There's Ben. And while he was in Beirut, he was, he was one of those people in Beirut, if you remember, was taken in 1984 and 1985, was taken hostage by a terrorist organization, and he was held by this group for 16 months. And he came back and really shared with the denomination his experience, an experience that was unique in the sense that he shared, he shared no hatred. He shared, he shared difficult stories that he acknowledged and the pain that he felt, but he shared no hatred. He shared his story with a true Christian heart. And he came home from his captivity after 16 months. He became a seminary professor. And he continued to teach about his experience. In fact, in one of my churches, I taught a video course that he conducted about his experience. It's one of the most powerful courses I ever taught. And I had the pleasure of meeting him when I was a General Assembly Commissioner in 1999 in Fort Worth, Texas, and he's a wonderful man. And so Fahed, a former moderator, will be traveling to Ben Weir's funeral, a former moderator, in just about a week or so. Um, this morning, we are recognizing All Saints Sunday, uh, and our youth uh, are here to speak about people who've had an impact upon their lives. And I wanted to set the context for you by sharing with you stories of two great leaders, one who has passed from our midst and one who is still among us. And these are two great servants of the church, but also very human, very real, very down to earth, committed to Christ to serve as his follower. You see, sainthood, the sainthood that we celebrate as Reformed Presbyterians, sainthood is not some special status that's only given to certain people. The word sainthood ref references us all. We are a sainthood of all believers, and we believe in the communion of saints. We are connected to those who have gone before us and who in this world was, were faithful to Christ. And when we celebrate all saints as Reformed Presbyterians, we celebrate this spiritual connection that cannot be taken away from us because of the reality and the promise of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're connected to each other by God's kingdom. And so we're going to ask our youth to come up and share some thoughts along those lines. Uh, Haley Harper will come first, and then after Haley, uh, Emily Coyne. Hey guys. Well, most of you know about my life and what I've been through. How when I was about seven, eight years old, my dad passed away from lung cancer and I didn't have the perfect life. I have been many different places and I still am now. But one of the things is that I've really learned from my dad before he passed away was how he taught me how to be a Christian and how he taught me to be able to do many things I learned now. Before he passed away, I didn't know if he was a Christian or if he wasn't. I wasn't really like into that at the time. Like usually when you're a little kid, you don't understand it. 
Like, what is a Christian? What's God? Who's this? Oh my gosh, there's a person in the sky. Like, what is that? I learned from him how he taught me how to be a Christian, who God was, how he came from the sky, what happened, why we celebrate certain things. And it was just really cool because it was just awesome. And a couple of days ago, my foster mom, Miss Maria Dow, not Maria Bruce, but she told me that I had an older sister. I didn't know it. And so she told me that before my dad passed away, he became a Christian. He was saved before he died. And he taught me how you can be able to get saved before you die, whether you haven't been to church or you have. And it just bizarre me. I just didn't know that you can do that. And so now, even though I've been to church my whole entire life, I've learned a lot of things and experience. And that one other person that hasn't died that's still here, thankfully, is my grandma. All of you know her, Ruth Whipple. She took me to church when I was little for about two years when I wasn't with my dad or my mom. She just really made me who I am, becoming a Christian and knowing God and becoming into this church. And I just wanted to say, I love you, Grandma, and I love you, Dad. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, my grandfather strived to live his life as an example of Christ. He was one of those people who was always ready and available to lend a hand to those in need, no matter what the task may be. He served his church, family, and many roles until he wasn't physically capable to. However, even in his final days, he was able to make an impact on so many people. He never stopped trusting and loving God, no matter how hard anything became. One day when, I was, when we were sitting together, I asked him if he had wished that he was never diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I was so surprised by his answer. Sorry. Not at all. If I had never gotten this, everything would be different. I wouldn't have gotten to the chance to spend the time I did with so many great people. Sure, I missed out a lot, and I am not as active as I used to, but I wouldn't change anything about this. Who knows, by the time that you were my age, they might have found a cure, and maybe I helped. Well, he helped me. He helped me to show, to show me that faith can help you through so many difficult times. I think my grandfather is one of the reasons I am so involved in my church. My grandfather is so passionate about his faith, and it was amazing have someone in my life that I could look up to. I hope I can take his lead and become Christ-like like him. Thank you. Sorry. Haley and Emily, thank you. It comes from the heart. It comes from the spirit. We could hear that. Not only could we hear it, we could feel it. And that's what we are about in the community of faith, to hear each other's hearts, to feel what you feel, and recognize that we're drawn together by the Spirit and the presence of Christ. Thank you for your witness today, for indeed it, has, it lifts up and, sh and all of us, and we learn new things from each other. You know, as, as a moderator of the network that I attended this past week, one of the realities is that we're allowing into leadership of our network uh, millennials who are now coming up through the ranks of the church and they just don't want to be in the church. They want to be active and they want to be leaders in the church and people like me have to kind of start getting used to the idea that it's time to make room for them. You know, when I started with this network 10 years ago, and this is no lie, I was 49 years old and they considered me to be the youngster on the network. Uh, we are changing that leadership model 
And those who are stepping into big leadership roles with our network now are folks in their 20s, college students and seminary students, and it's something to behold. And this sainthood of all believers, this communion of believers connects us with those who have gone before, who have left us lessons of life that we can celebrate, that teach us how to walk our journey and help us teach those who are stepping into our shoes to continue that walk so that the church continues to be relevant in the world even as it changes, proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we thank the youth for being part of the leadership in worship today. Thanks be to God, amen.